Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, delivering the game ball for the opening tip off is a very special person for Kansas City. Darwin Penny is the executive director of the Urban Youth Academy. Their mission is to develop underserved youth in the game of baseball and softball. Darwin Penny, thank you for your service to Kansas City. Are we good here? That's all right. Good to go. Hi, this is Mark Miller, Ross Casio, 82nd Annual 2019 NAIA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship. Glad you're with us from historic Municipal Auditorium. It's John Brown, the Golden Eagles, against the Bethel, Tennessee Wildcats. We are underway. We'll catch you up on the Jimmy John's freaky fast starting line. in just a few seconds here. Bethel's going right to left. Bethel out of the Sooner States Athletic Conference. Quick turnover. They come into this game under 19-year head coach Jeff Britt, 24 and 8 on the season. They are the fifth seed in the Liston bracket against John Brown, the Golden Eagles, second in their conference, the Sooner Athletic Conference, the fourth seed in the Liston bracket, coached by fifth-year head coach Jason Beshta. And Isaac Edmondson hits the first deuce of the game. He averages 18.1. Let's take a look at that. Jimmy John's freaky fast starting lineups brought to you by Jimmy John's. First of all, for John, John Brown, the Golden Eagles. Number 14, Jake Cottle. 35, Josh Bowling. 23, Rokas Grabliaskas. Quentin Bailey, number 32, and number 24, Ira Perrier. For Bethel, Tennessee, it's Isaac Edmondson. Caden Edmondson, no relation. Chase Napier, his twin brother Braxton Napier, and number 50, Noah Chapman. Chase Napier is 15, Braxton Napier is 10. And we are underway here in this historic building where John Wooden won his first national championship at UCLA many, many years ago. And Wilt Chamberlain played that classic triple overtime game against North Carolina in 1957. So we're glad you're with us on a early Wednesday morning here in Kansas City. 2-0 a turnover with the basketball are the Golden Eagles. Leading score at 16.9 a game is Jake Cottle. Jump shot on the way and just like that called his name and Cottle knocks down a three-point shot. A 40% marksman from beyond the arc and delivers and John Brown's got a 3-2 lead. Drive inside and off the glass and a pretty move by Chase Napier. Napier's got two, leads his team in steals, shoots third with 60 coming into this game. 39% field goal shooter and it's a drive. There goes Cottle on the baseline. They want the ball in Cottle's hand. Josh Bowling, number 35, averages 16 a game and leads the team with 74 assists. Grabliaska's shot won't go, and one and done, and rebounded by the Wildcats. Man-to-man -man defense here for the Golden Eagles. And we're going to have an offensive foul. Getting great position inside was Bowling, and just running him over was Chapman. Noah Chapman, his first team foul number one on the Wildcats, making their second ever appearance here at the NAIA Men's National Championship. Well, Mark, and it's a John Brown team with a little bit of an international flavor. Starters from Lithuania, England, New Zealand, to match up with a couple of kids from Bentonville, Arkansas, Detroit, Michigan. Jump shot, deep three, won't go down by Grabliaskis. On the push, here comes Chase Napier. Napier in front court, trying to get it inside. 
Gets to the big fella. Jump shot up, good. Count it. Isaac Edmondson, he's got four out of the six Bethel points. Seventh all-time leading scorer in school history coming into this game with 1,902 points. Averages 18.1 points a game on the season. 6-3 lead, 16-40 to play here in the opening half. Connell's long range three, no good off the rim and ripping down the rebound. For Bethel was Edmondson, Caden Edmondson. Only thing he does is shoot 63% from the field, number 33. That's sixth in the nation in field goal percentage. Connell misses again, offensive stick back up, good. Count is for Quentin Bailey, he's got a deuce. Brenton Toussaint, who averages 7.8 a game for John Brown, is out tearing an ACL in the Sooner Athletic Conference Championship game, so they'll be without his services, and that's Brenton Toussaint. Into the hands of Napier. Back over to his twin brother, Braxton Napier, 5'10 guard, 127 assists on the season. Goes to work and stepping out of bounds along the far sideline and turnover and substitutions coming in for both clubs. John Brown, number 11. Desmond Kennedy, number Luke Harper, Desnair Carnes, and Desmond Kennedy. Denzier Carnes, number 15. Basketball is Kennedy out front. Pass inside, another turnover. Substitution for Wildcats, number 13, Charles Cobb. Charles Cobb will also check in. When you wonder about this 9 o'clock game, both teams uh, struggling a little bit from the floor right now, Mark. Early game for both squads. A nice drive for Bradley Walker. The reserve just checked in. The six foot five forward kisses it off the glass. And they'll call the foul on Denzier Carnes, his first. Bradley Walker made the basket. He's shooting one. Team foul number two. Music in my headset here, and I don't know where that's coming from. Free throw up and good by Walker. He's got three nine five here in the early going from Bethel, Tennessee. A little token pressure for the first time this morning. Easily broken by John Brown. This man-to-man -man defense, nice spin move inside. Can't get it to go, but the tip up is up and good by Carnes. He's got a deuce, and it's 9-7, 14, and 45 to play here in the opening half. Little teardrop inside, won't go down for Isaac Edmondson. He's got four early, but missed on that try. Winner of, this, winner of this game gets the winner of the number one seed in the Liston bracket, LSU Alexandria against Carroll Mont or Carroll Baptist, excuse me, Central Baptist, Arkansas. That game will be at, played this afternoon at three o'clock. Nine seven as we near the 14 minute mark here in the opening half, of the first game. To win this championship, you've got to win five games in six days, and Walker's making an immediate impact off the bench for Bethel. The Wildcats, he's got five, makes it 11 to seven. Bethel by four, and a battle of five and four seeds here in the Liston bracket. Throughout this tournament, we'll talk to you about the different brackets, the Liston, the Dewar, the Kramer, and the Naismith bracket, and I know, Ross, you've got information on all of that you'll share. Connell, downtown three, rattles off. No really offensive rebounds here as of yet for John Brown and the Wildcats of Bethel, Tennessee on the push. Chapman's got it inside, kicks it back out, and they'll restart the offense. Into the hands of Braxton Napier. To Chapman, back to Napier. He'll pull the trigger from three. Can't hit it, shoots an air ball, but gets fouled. 
And that's a no-no. Foul's going to go against Desmond Kennedy. Third team foul, but this is three. Again, what you want to do on a three-point shooter is just run to the side of them with your hand up. You run right at them, you're going to draw a foul, and that's exactly what Kennedy did. So Napier, Braxton Napier, a 67% free throw shooter, will go to the line to shoot three with 13-11 left here in the opening half, try to increase this Bethel lead, and that free throw is off the mark. Well, and it's an easy call for the official right there, Mark, and clearly you could see that the shot was affected by the foul, and no argument there. And unfortunately for Bethel, not taking advantage of it here and missing the two free throws on the three-shot attempt. Bowling will come in replacing Bailey in Jason Beshta's lineup for John Brown. Third opportunity here for Napier, Braxton Napier. Free throw on the way, and he hits that one. 12-7. Jared Walker checks in. Number three. So we've got two Walkers, two Napiers, and two Edmondsons on this club from Bethel, Tennessee, the Sooner of the Southern States Athletic Conference. Carnes has it out front in a collision inside the paint, and somebody's going to get whistled on a foul, and that's going to go against Bethel. And when you're carrying 30-some-odd games in five days, the fewer names to remember, the better, right? <laughs> <laughs> Foul's going to go against Bradley Walker, his first team foul, number two, on Bethel. 12-7, just inside of 13. Got a running teardrop way off the mark on the miss. That was Luke Harper on the shot miss. Drive inside, but they're going to get a traveling violation. That'll go against Bradley Walker. Walker is really taking it to the rack here early, really aggressive offensively. He's got five. Good move there, but just took that slide step to get the traveling violation. Harper will check out. Back in is Grambleyaskis for John Brown and the Golden Eagles. Following this game, we'll have Lewis Clark State, Idaho against Campbellsville, Kentucky. A game scheduled for about a 10.45 tip. We'll have that for you right here on the NAIA Network. Cottle <laughs> takes another jump shot off the mark. A 40% marksman for three, so they want him taking that shot if he's open. Pull up through uh, Deuce in transition. Missed. And the ball is going to be tipped out of bounds on the miss by Jared Walker. It'll go back over to the Golden Eagles. Both teams going to the bench here. Cottle will come out. Ira Perrier will check back in for him. Well, this teams will go about nine or ten deep on both sides of the basketball here, especially er early. Get the jitters out of your system here. Work up a sweat, then get into the flow of the game. Well, and John Brown trying to get Caudle going early on. I know he goes to the bench now, but he made his first three. He's missed his next three. Leads the team with 92 made three-pointers on the season, so they would like to get him on track. Part of the reason right now they're trailing by five, and hoping to stay close while they give him a quick rest early in this game. Well, Perrier checks into the lineup and then just turns the basketball over. One thing about it, defense travels. You can rely on your defense. Offense sometimes doesn't travel and you have to get into the flow of the game. Defense should travel though. 12-7, 12 minutes to play here. Bethel by five off the dribble drive. They're running one-hander. Won't go down by Walker. Again, continues to be very aggressive, attacking his man and getting his, trying to dribble downhill and get it to the basket. And that's what you want to do from that guard position. Out front with it is Kennedy. He's going to take an NBA three and splashed it. Kennedy at just a 31%. Three-point shooter drills one from downtown Kansas City, and it's 12-10. Bethel's lead has been cut to two. The biggest lead of the game has been five for the Wildcats. Making just their second appearance inside to Cade Edmondson. Back out front, they'll spin the ball around the perimeter. Ball fake, drive to the middle. Trying to get it downhill, going to the basket. On the miss by Walker, and ripping down the rebound is Rokas Grant. Rokas Grabliaskis. Back over to Kennedy. And that low baseline. Inside to Bailey. He's going to get it just stripped and ripped away by Caden Edmondson. 
The six foot eight center on the push, pull up jump shot, yes. Charles Cobb knocks it down, the six foot guard for Bethel, but credit Caden Edmondson. Good defensive play. Back to 14 to 10, 10 and a half to play. Three from the right wing and bullseye. Josh Bowling, a 35% shooter from beyond the arc. And we've got a one point game. Two evenly matched teams thus far, the four and the five, and that's what you would expect on a four and five matchup here. Trying to match that three and doing so and knocking it down is Charles Cobb. Cobb's got the last five points for Bethel, 17-13. 10 5 to play. 30 second shot clock. That really hasn't mattered much here in the early going. Both teams get into their offense pretty quickly. Ball is going to be stripped and knocked away. And then the, on the floor, pushes it ahead. Lamp up and can't get it to go. Tip try no good. Great hustle by Walker, but not being able to finish with Jared Walker. And then we're going to have a foul on the perimeter on a reach in against Bethel. And that'll go against Jared Walker. His first. Team foul number three. Wholesale substitutions coming in from both clubs. We'll catch you up as we go here. What a play though, a nice hustle play by Bradley Walker. Diving to get the steal, then as the ball went ahead, Dove knocked it ahead, but Walker didn't get a good enough angle on the layup and couldn't get it to go and missed the bunny. Yeah, Bradley Walker's really given Jeff Britt some great minutes off the bench, some great energy early on for Bethel. Pass inside and on the foul, and the bucket made by Denzier Carnes. He's got four. And that'll go against Isaac Edmondson. His first team foul number four. Cuts the lead to a deuce. Carnes, a 68% free throw shooter, the line to try to complete the three point play. Up and no, couldn't get it to go. Chapman gets the rebound into the hands of Braxton Napier. Fixes his mouthpiece as he comes across the midcourt stripe here at the Municipal Auditorium. What a facility, we'll talk more about that as well. Three, way off the mark, rebounded by Carnes. He's active on the Golden Eagles as well. Back out front to Harper, who's checked back in. Over to Carnes. Play a little two bad game, Carnes gets it back out front. Both teams playing man to man. There's Cottle again for three in and out. You like his stroke though. You know, great form. You know, if he gets, continues to get that open shot, he's going to start busting them here. Bethel with the ball and a two point lead. Drive to the basket up and under wouldn't go, and Harper rips down the rebound for the Golden Eagles. Nothing in transition. Harper keeps it and kicks it back out front. They'll restart the offense. Love it on the shot clock, 8.29 on the game clock here in the opening half. Cottle goes inside and off the glass, couldn't get it to go. Really struggling from the field here, but you know they want the ball in Jake Cottle's hands. Derud for John Brown. To the basket, to the right, off the glass and kissing it in on a nice drive is Fode Sankere. He's got two, we've got a 30 second timeout. 8.11 to play here in the opening half, our score. Bethel, Tennessee, the Wildcats, 19, John Brown, Golden Eagles, 15. And John Brown probably feeling fortunate right now, down just the four points. You mentioned Cottle, who leads this team with 17 points a game, just has the one three-point basket. That was early on in the contest. They've gotten him some good looks, just hasn't found the stroke yet. Mark, I know something that we've talked about before is these small college teams that come into play in an auditorium like this. This is a different environment for a lot of these schools here, so that might take some adjusting. You're exactly right. A bigger venue here, no doubt about it. This, uh, this place seats 10,000 people. Now, there's not 10,000 folks here yet, you know, but uh, it is it is a bigger arena, maybe just bigger than what these teams have played with or have played in um, throughout the season. A little more space behind the baskets than they're used to in some of those smaller gyms. Depth so. perception is, you're, you're exactly right. The key, and then the drive and a tomahawk slam. Denzier Carnes, he's got six, and that was with authority. I don't know if we got that on video tape or not, that we can play it back, but that was authority coming out of that timeout. 
trying to answer with a three and off the mark is Chase Napier. And John Brown's got a chance to tie with a deuce or take the lead with a three. Harper out front. And uh, depth perception behind the basket, no uh, problem when you're going to slam home like that for Carnes. Carnes went uh, to the basket again, but blocking it was Caden Evanson, the dribble drive and scoring. Evanson, Isaac Evanson, he's got six. Again, no relation between Isaac and Caden Evanson. They spell it, pronounce it the same way, but it's spelled just slightly different. Cottle got a, got a three, but that's been it. Their leading score for John Brown. 21-17. John Brown's knocked on the door to try to tie or take the lead, but trail by four, open three. Carnes <coughs> off the side of the rim and ripping down the board is Chase Napier. Napier will push it across the midcourt stripe. Four-point lead here. Out front is Caden Edmondson. It's 14.6 a game. It hasn't got done a lot, but that just hasn't scored this of yet. Of an off-ball foul. Yeah, against John Brown. They're going to get Quentin Bailey there. On the hold down low by the bucket. Fourth team foul, first foul on Bailey. Again, both teams really going to their benches here. Bethel's playing eight deep, eight deep for John Brown. Fighting for a position is Caden Edmondson, then destroying it in backcourt. Running it down is Braxton Napier. He'll come down, pull the string from a, about an 18 footer no doing there and Carnes gets the defensive rebound 21 17 640 to play three on the way missed and rebounded by Braxton Napier open three Caden Edmondson Caden Edmondson can flat out shoot the basketball it doesn't shoot a lot of threes but he's a 42 percent shooter when he does and he knocked that one down Sixth in the NAI this season in field goal percentage, 63 in all his shots, 42, but just a 63% free throw shooter. Then there's a steal. But biggest lead of the game at seven to the basket, to the rim, and a foul on the drive by Braxton Napier for Bethel, Tennessee, and the Wildcats. They're going to get it on Carnes, his second team foul, number five, but a two-shot opportunity by Braxton Napier, who's a 67% free throw shooter. That's 2% higher than what this team shoots from the free throw line for the season at 65. Free throw up, yes. Napier, second point of the game. Bailey will check in, replacing Carnes in the John Brown Golden Eagle lineup. And Braxton Napier getting to the line there by creating uh, some movement there with a nice jump stop, draws the foul, only hits one of two free throws. Biggest lead of the game at the six minute mark is eight, 25-17, Bethel. Basketball out front is Bowling. Now we're just 16 a game to the basket, to the rim, and a nice defensive play by Chapman. Then Kate Nevinson rips it down. Outlet out to Chase Napier. One on one, kicks it to the corner, open three ball, bang! What a pass, finding the opening man. And putting it up and in is Isaac Evanson. He's got nine. And that whole series of plays there starts by Noah Chapman with a block here on the other end. And starting in transition, the open three. And we have an 11-point ball game. Biggest lead and biggest margin. You're right, with 5.20 to play in the opening half. Golden Eagles want to stay close here. It was 21-17, it's a 7-0 run for Bethel, then an offensive foul is going to be called. And guess who called it? Cade Nebinson. He was there to get the charge on Quinton Bailey. His second, team foul number five, a non-shooting foul. And we've got a timeout. Full timeout, Bethel wants to talk about it. They're leading by 11 here. Good timeout here, I think, by Jeff Britt, 19-year veteran, not his first rodeo, 429 and 252. That's his record. He's got an opportunity. What he's probably telling his team right now, you're up by 11. We need a strong, high-energy five minutes here to pour it on. Let's get a working margin. You get ahead by 11, you want to push it to 16 or 17 to try to get a bigger lead here. 
don't let up, don't let them crawl back in. Yeah, and you, you know, let's go back to Caden Emerson for just a moment. And you talk about uh, what he brings to this team. You already mentioned the shooting percentage, 63%. Second leading scorer on this team at almost 15 points a game. And he makes plays like that on the other end where he draws the charge and just one of those players that contributes a little bit of everything and does everything well for this uh, Bethel team. One of the team leaders, no question about it. In a game where Isaac Edmondson has maybe struggled a little bit, he's the leading scorer at 18 points per contest. Caden Edmondson has brought some energy and his team enjoys an 11 point lead here in the kickoff game of the NAIA tournament. Game to follow here at 10.45, scheduled tip-off time. Lewis Clark State, Idaho, the number two seed in the Liston bracket. They'll draw Campbellsville, Kentucky, the number seven seed. We'll have that for you. Thanks for joining us here on the NAIA Network. Niles Media Group, Mark Miller, Ross Casho with you as Bethel now with that 11-point lead as we near the five-minute mark. And the hands of Walker. Loses the ball, then Connell gets the steal on the miscue. Connell coast to coast, layup can't get it to go, but then over the back row. They gonna, is that going to call a shooting foul? Or are they going to call, and that was a late call. Oh. Yeah, they're going to get Napier on the foul, on the shot from Connell. And well, that, was a, yeah. that was a late, that was a late call. They, late the call. tip try was already up before they, and that was the, Trail official, Connell puts it up and in, an 84% free throw shooter. This team, John Brown, the Golden Eagle, shoots 75% from the line. Well, and head coach Jason Beshta is hoping that this can maybe get him untracked a little bit here. Again, remember, 17 points per contest for Cottle. And those are his first two points since hitting a three very early in this contest. Well, that's what Jeff Britt didn't want for Bethel to come out of that timeout and then just lose the basketball and give up an easy two points, which results in the free throws by Cottle. Knock to a nine point lead, four and 44 to go. Pull up jump shot, no good. Chapman gets a rebound, goes up and then just gets it stuffed. Right, Josh Bowling says, not on my watch. Puts it up and rejects it. It'll stay with the Wildcats. And Bowling was even momentarily arguing that it should be his team's basketball. He thought it may have deflected off a Bethel player, but a great block nonetheless. Foul inside by Cottle. Little push in the back with two hands. So that'll go against Cottle, his first. Team foul number seven, that's one and one time. Cottle is upset with himself and to the line will go Isaac Edmondson, a 67% free throw shooter. But that's two now on Cottle and be interesting to see here with 434 left in the half if he's going to stay in this contest. You know, his team trailing by nine points. He is, in fact, going to go to the bench. And replacing him will be Ira Perrier. But that may be the decision to keep him on the bench for the rest of the half. Again, your leading score, but you're down nine. So that could be a – that's a tough decision right now for uh, Jason Beshta. Edmondson, Isaac Edmondson into double figures with ten. <clears throat> He'll get the second of the one and one back to a 10 point lead at 29 19. And Evanson hits them both. <laughs> He's got 11. Grab Lioskis, a little 2 2 1 half court trap here. Trying to pin it in the corners just like that. Need to get rid of it, and they do. Corners. Pass is going to be an errant pass and a turnover. It's exactly what. Bethel wanted out of that. Get a turnover, get the ball back. And a missed shot opportunity there for the Golden Eagles. And I think just the second or third time we've seen that pressure out of Bethel, and Jeff Britt sees it pay off for his squad there. They broke the initial pressure, and after they got it across half court, the turnover. Isaac Edmondson drives to the basket, can't kiss it off the glass. But an offensive rebound gets a second chance opportunity, then losing the basketball is Braxton Napier. Here come the Golden Eagles. 23 and 10, finished 15 in the last regular season poll in the NAIA. Bethel was 18th ranked in that final poll. Three on the deep side won't go. And a defensive rebound and pushing it up the court is Chase Napier. Out front with it, 3 and 35 to play in a halftime. 
Hurts back out front to Walker. He'll shoot from three in and out. And rebounded by Kennedy for the Golden Eagles. 11 point game, 30 to 19. In the battle of four and five. Deep three, knocked it down. Bullseye for Desmond Kennedy. That's his second three of the game. He's got six. Back to an eight point game, 30 22. And just a 31% three point shooter is Kennedy, but his team needed that one. Trying to answer from the three and the missed shot by Chase Napier, but an offensive rebound. Nice work trying to go up and under, but getting it done inside on the bucket by Isaac Edmondson on the miss by Chapman. Chapman did a great job of getting that rebound. He just should have put it up with the left hand on the left side, tried to go up and under, but his teammate Isaac Edmondson bailed him out, put it back up and in on the stick back. Three won't go. Offensive rebound. Need to go back up with that. They'll throw it to the wing. Can't get it to go. And ripping down the rebound is Bradley Walker. Yeah, Ira Perrier passed up an open shot on the rebound to kick it out for a three. And Bethel with the chance now to extend this 10 point margin. Walker's got it. Back out front to Isaac Ebenson. Ebenson goes to work and walk with the basketball. They're going to have a foul. Jump ball. We got jump ball on the. Trail official had jump ball. The C official looked like he was going to go travel, but he waved it off with a better angle that the trail official had. So the ball will jump ball, position arrow will favor Bethel. Well, and since Jeff Britt took that time out, his team had an 11 point lead at the time. Now it's uh, in a 10 point lead. So. Actually, they're going to wave that off. They had the arrow pointing the wrong way, so they'll give the ball over to the Golden Eagles. That was our first jump ball That's after right. the opening tip. So Bethel will have the basket, or excuse me, John Brown will have the basketball. 2.15 to play till halftime, 32 22. Carnes back to Cottle. Open three, hits the front of the iron. Cottle hit that early three. It's been ice cold since then. Inside to Chapman, one on one, back out to Caden Edmondson. The basketball is Walker. That's Jared Walker with the ball. Ten on the shot clock. Isaac Edmondson goes to the basket. Shot wouldn't go, tipped out, but a second opportunity. Running it down is Caden Edmondson. Back to Jared Walker. Looks over to his head coach, Jeff Britt, for the play. New shot clock, now 22 on that. Isaac Evanson just loses the basketball, but it was knocked out of bounds by Luke Harper, so it'll stay with the Wildcats. And this is that strong finish that you're looking for if you're Bethel. Again, you had an 11 point lead with that timeout. At the very minimum, you want to keep it as a double digit lead. John, uh, John Brown simply not able to get anything going offensively to cut into that lead. And Bethel in a pretty good position here. Winning a lot of the 50 50 balls right now, Mark. Curl cut to the basket, the give and go, an errant pass, turnover. Golden Eagles have it back. We'll catch up at halftime with all the stats here, the opening half. This is the opening game of the 82nd NAI Division I Men's Basketball National Championship. Pull up, jump shot from that short corner, up and good by Carnes. He's got eight to lead John Brown in scoring. Inside a minute to play in the first half, an eight-point lead, 32-24. The biggest has been 11 for Bethel and a couple of times here in the opening half. Chapman has it, picks up his dribble, back out front to Walker, Jared Walker. They'll restart the offense. Going to work is Edmondson. Loses the basketball, but it's going to be tipped out of, brown, tipped out of bounds along the baseline. Shot clock will stay at 7. Game clock at 38.9 here. Bethel will have the basketball. Trying to get into Caden Edmondson. He'll go to work. Draws a double team. That hits Chapman. Edmondson drew the double team, and Chapman knew exactly what to do. Saw the big fella grab the double team. He cut to the basket, and Edmondson found it. Ten-point lead, 25 seconds left. About a second difference between the shot and the game clock. Yeah, that's just another example there of what we see from Caden uh, Edmondson that time with the assist. You know, doing a little bit of everything. 
been one of the glue players for this Bethel team here in the first half. Gravlioskis has it, gives it back to Bowling. He's been held to three. Dribble drive to the basket, no good. Five seconds left. Pushing it up is Chapman. Chapman gives it off. Three at the buzzer, up and it's their side of the rim and it's off target by Jared Walker. We played the first 20. At the end of the first half, our score, Bethel, Tennessee, 34. John Brown, the Golden Eagles, 24. We'll have second half action after this timeout. You're listening to the 82nd, 2019, and the 82nd NAIA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship here from Historic Municipal Auditorium. I'm Mark Miller alongside my partner, Ross Casho. Second half coming your way after this timeout. We're revolutionizing the game of basketball right before your eyes. We've given it a brand new engine, driving each and every one of us into the data-charged future of sports, harnessing the power of instant analytics and kicking the thrill of competition into high gear. It's the game you know and like nothing you've ever experienced. Shock track. This is who we are. We aren't afraid to get our hands dirty, learning and experiencing as we go in the field or the lab. We aren't waiting around for someone to show us the way. We are actively shaping the future. We're not doing this alone either. We're focused on those around us and making an impact here and afar. Created to shift perspective, to tell a story, building an atmosphere of expression. Our vision for tomorrow is brighter it's better, and it includes us all. We are putting in the work to make it a reality. And it's not just about what we can do, but how we do it and why we do it that way. Pushing to the front of the pack, leading the way, and staying Christ-centered in the center of it all. This is who we are. Welcome to Jessup. True to the game before there was a game. Loyal to the ball before there were buckets. When Spalding created our first basketball in 1894, we didn't follow the competition. We set the standard. And we never stopped innovating, improving, adapting to meet the changing needs of the player and the game. We didn't make the rules. We made the ball. It's in our passion. It's in our achievements. It's in our architecture and our heritage. It's in the way we innovate and discover. It's how we engage and inspire. It's time to experience it for yourself. Peru State College. See what's in it for you. Shakespeare once said, some are born great, and some have greatness thrust upon them. The rest of us, he said, have to achieve greatness. We know exactly what he means. Be not afraid of greatness. Achieve it. Benedictine College, where greatness begins.
difference between possible and impossible? It's a person who believes they can, surrounded and supported by others, <coughs> by us, who believe it too. <coughs> U.S. Bank, the power of possible. can help make them a reality. Talk to one today. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Each day brings new possibilities. That's why you need a partner dedicated to helping your company reach its goals. U.S. Bank, the power of possible.
John Brown shooting just 29% in that first half. 13 points for Isaac Edmondson to lead all scores. Bethel leading scorer on the season at 18 points a game has 13 in the first half. John Brown was led by Carnes who had eight points. Big stat though in the first half, just one of eight shooting for Jake Caudill who leads this John Brown team in scoring on the season with 17 points per contest. 34-24, Mark Miller and Ross Cash are glad you're with us. Bethel has the balls going left to right here with a 10 point lead. In man-to-man -man defense, it's been the defensive choice here by both teams. It's Braxton Napier, Napier, Noah Chapman, Chase Napier, they are twins, Caden and Isaac Edmondson, same last name, no relation for Bethel. For John Brown, it's Jake Cottle, Josh Bowling, Rokos Grabliaskis, Quentin Bailey, and Ira Perrier. Well, Grabliaskis with the layup there, Mark, and that is uh, something that they could use this John Brown team, especially with Cottle struggling, uh, struggling in that first half of play. Cuts the lead here to eight. Well, Cottle, you're, that's a good point. Cottle's got five, averages 16.9. Josh Bowling had three at halftime, averages 16, and that was Grabliaskis' first bucket. He averages nine a game. Team averages 80 points a game, but the big three were held to a combined eight points in the first half. Pull up three under pressure, a little contact, nothing called, just beating the shot clock, but the ball was way off target on the miss by Braxton Napier. The shot clock really wasn't a factor at all in that first half. No, these teams get it up and get into their offense pretty quick. Couple of passes, couple of down screens, trying to dribble it downhill into the corner. Feed way off the mark, but Cutler runs it down and loses it, but it's knocked out of bounds by Braxton Napier of Bethel. Winner of this game gets the winner of the number one seed of the Liston bracket, LSU Alexandria. They'll play Central Baptist Arkansas. That game's this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Colleague Stephen Davis will have that game for you here on the NAIA Network. Glad you're with us here from Historic Municipal Auditorium in downtown Kansas City. Good morning crowd here. Pass inside, but not being able to hang on to it, but getting it back on the tip. Three ball way off the mark, shot clock violation. Well, very interesting now twice the shot clock has come into play after not being a factor in that first half once for each team here. So the defensive intensity picking up here in the first couple of minutes of half number two. Takes a while to get that blood flowing, I guess, at nine o'clock in the morning. Inside pass from Cade Nebinson to Isaac Edmondson. And again, Cade Nebinson, when he gets it down low, He's going to draw a double team. Foul goal against Bowling, his first first team foul of the second half. And Isaac Ebenson, who led Bethel with 13, goes the line to shoot a pair and misses the front end a little bit short. It's the front of the iron. First substitution, Desmond Kennedy will replace Perrier. Kennedy came in in the first half for Jason Jason Beshta's team and hit a couple of threes, and he's right back in the lineup a minute and 20 into the second half. The second free throw up by Edmondson up and good. He's got 14, averages 18.1 points a game. Seventh all-time leading scorer in Bethel, Tennessee history. Coming into this tournament with 1,902 points. I couldn't count that high when I played. Turnaround jump shot up, good. Need to get Josh Bowling if you're rooting for the Golden Eagles. You need number 35 to get on track there. He's got five now, it stays a seven point lead. John Brown just kind of hanging around here a little bit. Bethel hasn't been able to put the knockout punch. Shot off the mark, tip try no good. And it goes out of bounds off Chase Napier and Golden Eagles have a chance to cut into that seven point lead. Well, and John Brown also hopes to warm up from three point range in that first half. They were just 29% for 14 from beyond the arc. The ball is Grablioskis to Cottle. Need to get Cottle untracked as well. He had some looks, just couldn't get him to go down. Drives to the basket, kicks it over to the corner. Bowling thought about a three and then dips it inside. They're going to get a reach in foul. This time over the back by Caden Edmondson. That'll be just his first in the six foot eight senior, six foot eight center. First team foul. It'll stay with the Golden Eagles from John Brown. Pass to Cottle goes up and just lost control of the basketball. It's one of those days right now for Jake Cottle. It was a nice entry pass on the inbounds play underneath the basket, but they could not take advantage of it. What a nice play call 
off the inbounds plays and wide open was Cottle. Just couldn't uh, couldn't come up with the pass there. Run a weave off the high post by Caden Edmondson. He gets it back. He knocked down a three from there, but then a nice give and go inside. Chapman gets it blocked. A great defensive play on the stuff by Quentin Bailey. And then Cottle throws it away. Got double teamed and threw it behind him. No, he didn't have any help over there. And again, it's uh, Bethel has uh, picked its spots today of when they're going to deploy that full court pressure there. And it seemed to surprise John Brown on a couple of occasions. Chapman's got it out front into the hands of Chase Napier, and he walked with it. So a slow start by both teams here in the first three minutes and nine seconds of the second half. It was 34-24. John Brown has outscored Bethel 4-1 here in the opening minutes of the second half. Have a chance to cut into that lead again. Bowling out front with it goes to work. Kickoff pass inside and missed the bunny. Couldn't get it to go was Quentin Bailey. Oh my. Great feed by Bowling. Back to back and then Isaac Edmondson puts it up and puts it in and timeout Bethel. Edmondson was 16 but a missed opportunity there for John Brown the great feed inside. And we've got a full timeout. We'll keep it here. Well, and Jeff Britt takes the timeout there, even though his team just scored. Didn't like what he had been seeing offensively in the first three and a half minutes of this first half. It's been a little bit uh, lethargic for this Bethel squad offensively, so they get the big layup there. But you talk about a four-point swing. John Brown had a chance to cut the lead to five there. And again, a couple of point blank looks. One was a missed shot by Quentin Bailey. The other, Jake Cottle just had a pass go off his hands out of bounds. So this John Brown team has had opportunities, Mark, but here they sit still trailing by nine. Our next full timeout, we'll bring you up to date on the Liston bracket. Email Liston, an athletic director and head basketball coach at Baker University, which isn't far from Kansas City in Baldwin City. We'll tell you a little history of how this became the Liston bracket. That's at our next full timeout. <laughs> The ball is John Brown. Yeah, Liston accredited with uh, putting this tournament together way back when with another name you might have uh, heard of. We'll tell you that story here in a little bit. Bowling's three way off the mark. That looked like a pass, but it turned into a shot and it was missed. On the push, here's Chase Napier. Loses control of the basketball, picks it up and gives it to his twin brother, Braxton Napier. There goes Edmondson, long baseline, picked up by Cottle. Skip pass over, then kicks it inside of the short corner to Chapman. Back out front to Caden Evanson. They'll reset their offense to Chase Napier. Eight on the shot clock, 15.46 on the game clock here in the second half. Chapman, 16-footer, way off the mark. It's a glass before it hit a rim, and then the ball is going to be knocked away. Hustle, nice hustle play there by Chapman. Cottle's having just one of those games that he would like to forget, but he's still got 15.38 to try to change that. Nice hustle by Chapman, just came in and knocked it off his knee. It'll go back over to Bethel, Tennessee. And the lineup, Jared Walker will replace Braxton Napier in the lineup for Bethel. Well, Bethel was running out of time on the shot clock. That 17-foot jumper by Chapman, not what they want. But again, give them credit for keeping the play alive, and this team keeps the ball. Isaac Evans goes to work, lap up and good, up and under on the floater and kissed it off the glass. And right now it's the Isaac Ebenson show. He's got 18, Walker's got five, and that's the scoring. Everybody else in twos and threes. Rollings, bowling shots, excuse me, off the mark, rebounded by Walker. Up to Isaac Ebenson to the basket, to the rim, and they're going to call an offensive foul. On the dribble drive, bowling was there to take the charge. Second foul on Isaac Ebenson, second team foul on Bethel. Isaac Ebenson, though, trying to take this game over here. His team up by 11, 39, 28. Way these offenses are going, it may be a race to like 60. 60, may, 60 points may, may win this game, unless these offenses really start to pick up. Well, and that's exactly right. Edmondson trying to take the game over. You could see it in his eyes when he got that pass just at, across the midcourt stripe. He was going to go the distance there. He's feeling it right now with 18 points. He's the leading scorer on this team. He's already at his average. Kick in the corner and then an offensive foul. Chapman was there. Harper just checked in the game, was dribbling and 
looked was the setup play was to get it to Cottle in that deep corner. And Harper didn't see Chapman just waiting for him there and drew the offensive foul. His first on Harper, second team foul on the Golden Eagles. Here with 15 and 2. 15 02 left in the second half. Bethel up by 11, looking to advance. Call this the hardest tournament to win in the country. Need to win five games in six playing days. With 32 teams fighting it out in the 82nd annual NAI Division I Men's Basketball National Championship. Glad you're with us. Isaac Evanson back out front to Chapman around the perimeter. Into the hands of Jared Walker. Pull up three off the mark and the miss by Charles Cobb. Again, Bethel just not quite enough to pull this game out of reach, but then a missed layup. Fight for the rebound and a jump ball. On the miss on the drive. Possession arrow will go to Bethel. And the miss by Harper. Fode Sakar will check in for Bethel. John Brown, excuse me, John Brown will have it on the alternate possession. Cottle on the left wing. Drive, kicks in the corner. Kennedy for three, the back of the rim, and one and done, and rebounded by Sankari, who just checked in the lineup. Deep three, bullseye. Sankari, who missed one just a minute ago, knocked this one down. He's got five, and the biggest lead of the game is at 14, 42-28. They call that on the floor or on the shot on the foul against Bethel. Foul on the Wildcats, number 50, Noah Chapman. Beyond yeah, Chapman, his second. His second. His Team foul number three. John Brown will have it underneath their basket. Now, biggest lead of the game now for Bethel. Sakari with the big three on the other end. John Brown needs to answer, and they get it. Luke Harper knocks down his first three. An immediate timeout. Immediate timeout by John Brown. Let's take a look at that last three for Bethel on the shot by Sencare. Came across, flashed to the top of the key, and all in transition. It was an easy catch, shoot, turn, get into your shot, and drained it. Three point field goal shooting. John Brown just four for 18, Bethel four for 11. Been a tough shooting game for the Golden Eagles, and they trail by 11. That was a big three hit by Harper. Let's well, update him on the listing. You've got that, and you've got that handy. Well, Mark, yeah. They, and they're in the bracket tear, the listing bracket, which you, meant, which you mentioned earlier. And Emil Liston, who was the athletic director and basketball coach at Baker at the time, had a uh, meeting with Frank Kramer and a guy by the name of James Naismith back in 1937. And they decided that it was time to have a national tournament for small colleges. And that tournament, of course, started here in Kansas City. So along with, with Kramer and Naismith, uh, Liston founded college basketball's oldest tournament and quickly helped move the vision forward with the creation of the National Association of Intercollegiate Basketball. You know, we're not far from downtown Lawrence, the birthplace of basketball, with James Naismith being the inventor and coach at Kansas University, and Lawrence is about 25 miles from downtown Kansas City. On the miss. Golden Eagles trying to cut into this 11 point lead. 13 and 35 to play in the second half. Win, advance, lose, pack it up. It's a one and done event here in Kansas City. Harper tries to go back to back threes and dies. Luke Harper off the bench. 41% from beyond the arc. 5.7 points a game. He's got that. Back to back cuts it to an eight point lead, then a missed three and a one and done and rebounded by Bailey. Here comes Harper, feeling the groove. Now he drives to the basket, floats one up, and a pushing foul on the drive by Harper. Might have been a charge, but the foul on the drive occurred first. So Harper 
Instant offense, little Benny Johnson of the, of the Detroit Pistons. The microwave, and Harper's coming in. And Harper will go to the line to shoot a, a pair. Foul is on Charles Cobb, his first fourth team foul, and Harper is an 84% marksman from the free throw line. He's got a pair here trying to hit and misses the front iron. Hits the front iron and missed it. He scored the last six points for John Brown. Caden Edmondson will check back in for Bethel. Get a little bit more size inside the paint. Second opportunity for Harper, eight point game. One time it was 15. And an 84% free throw shooter, Harper missed them both. A couple of big misses there. After hitting two threes, go figure. Directing traffic out front with it is Jared Walker. Ebenson, with his size, he can turn and skip past that all over the court. Gets it inside, that's money off the glass and count it. Ebenson's fifth point, Caden Ebenson. Foul is on Harper, his second, team foul number three. John Brown has done a good job of keeping it out of the low post, out of Edmondson's hands. That time, Caden, and he misses the free throw, but an offensive rebound, stick back, no good. Edmondson gets the rebound, goes up, scores his foul! Caden Edmondson, he's got seven, that's what he does. Sixth in the nation in field goal shooting, and they're not 15-footers. That's just powering that basketball up. Brute force. Well, and once again, it's Bradley Walker keeping the play alive on the missed free throw. He actually missed a putback attempt, and Edmondson got the rebound and his second opportunity for a three-point play, but he's missed both free throws now. And, and then another. Cottle, yeah, Cottle couldn't get the offensive <laughs> rebound, or the defensive rebound, but the point-blank miss, and Golden Eagles get out of that mess. Cottle's got three fouls, by the way. Three on the way, in and out. Nobody there to rebound for the Golden Eagles. Ripped down by Walker on the push into the hands of Sankara. Cobb's got it, and they'll throw it around the perimeter. Three ball on the way. It's going to be ricocheted off the hands of Cottle. It'll stay with Bethel. Bethel leading 46-34. Well, and all of a sudden, Caden Edmondson becoming a force here down low for Bethel. I think you mentioned it just a moment ago that John, John Brown had done a nice job of really denying him the ball down low, but he's kind of making things happen now on the offensive glass. Almost had that rebound. Grableyaskis will come back in along with Quentin Bailey for John Brown, the Golden Eagles. Coached by fifth year head man, Jason Beshta. Offensive foul, just running, lowering that shoulder and running over the defender was Bradley Walker of Bethel. His second team foul, number five, the 1202 mark. Now, trying to finish that thought of Caden Edmondson, he missed a couple of free throws, but he gets it down in that low block and doesn't get a double team for a guard to come in and try to dig that ball away from him if he puts it on the deck. He does a nice job of keeping the ball above his shoulders. And that's what a post player should do when you get it inside. You put it on the deck, you become a guard. Keep that ball up high. You can see Caden Edmondson's been well coached. Knows what to do with it. Also knows how to pass out of the post position inside. Golden Eagles going to work, and they're going to call a strip inside on the attempt by Quinton Bailey. A two-shot foul. Going Walker, his third, team foul number six. So John Brown, maybe a silver lining here, will be shooting a one and one or in the bonus for the next 11 minutes and 48 seconds. Bailey's free throw up on the two shot foul, can't get it to go. 52% free throw shooter for the season. 
And John Brown trailing by 12 needs to take advantage of these opportunities. They've already had a miss, a couple of misses close to the basket. Also uh, some opportunities at the free throw line have been missed by them as well. Although they hit one of two there. Bailey with three, still remains 11 point lead. Pass inside to Edmondson, gets fouled. Put a little extra ball fake up there. Nice hustle by there by good sportsmanship by Jake Connell was the first man, John Brown, to help Caden Edmondson up. Foul be on Bailey, his third. Team foul number four, and back to the free throw line where Caden Edmondson is 0 for 2 here in the early going, but has a two shot opportunity here. Free throw up and leaves it short. A little flat on that as he slaps his hands. And both teams now leaving some points out there from the free throw line. Well, Bethel's only a 65% free throw shooting team. You want to be at 70 to 75%. John Brown is 75%. Evanson's second free throw. This one rattles up, hits the backboard, and drops in. Edmondson with eight. We've got a timeout. Let's preview some games coming up for you. We go to a 30-second break here. 47-35, John Brown. Next game up on the docket here will be Campbellsville, Kentucky, the seventh seed of the Liston bracket, playing the number two seed, Lewis Clark State, Idaho. We'll have that game for you. Follow that this afternoon at 1.15 will be the number four seed, out of the Naismith bracket, William Jessup out of California. They'll take on the number five seed, the LSU Shreveport Club. All right. That's at 115. We'll have all three of those games for you right here on the NAIA Network and Niles Media Group. Well, Mark, the first uh, several minutes of this half were owned by Isaac Edmondson. He leads all scorers tonight with 18 points. Last uh, few minutes, however, for Bethel, it's been Caden Edmondson doing some dirty work there on the glass, been able to uh, hit a couple of short shots, hasn't been able to convert the three-point plays, but he's been impressive down low. Nice move inside as Connell got the ball deep into the paint to Quinton Bailey, little left-handed baby five-footer, little baby hook up and in. Back to a 10-point lead. Edmondson out front with it. Into the deep corner, three is gonna be short. Nice block out positioning there by Josh Bowling was able to tip it over to his teammate. And on the push, grab Leoskis. Deep in the corner, they're gonna get a knocked out. The ball's gonna be knocked out of bounds by Kate Nevinson to the stay with John Brown. Braxton and Chase Napier, who are twins, check back into the lineup. A pair of Walkers, a pair of Edmondsons, and a pair of Napiers here on this Bethel, Tennessee club. We all can play the game, no doubt about it. But only one Grablioskis. That's right. <laughs> Connell goes to work. Forces up a three, not in rhythm. That was off target. His, wasn't, his shoulders weren't squared up to the basket when he shot that. Pushing it a little bit here. Napier back around the perimeter. And Isaac Edmondson goes to work. In the corner, hands down, shot up, drained it. Up and in from three-point land is Fode Centura. It's actually, they're gonna give it just a two-point shot. He's got seven now. 12-point lead. It's hovered around nine to 12 here for some time now. Inside the bay that goes to work now with the right hand up and in. Curler, or just put rattled around the, uh, the cylinder there and just wouldn't go down. Nice shot though. Isaac Evanson to the basket. Off the glass, no good. Tip try, no good. Rebounded uh, by John Brown on the push. Drive inside, and will they have a block or a charge? Looks like they're going to have a blocking foul. Chase Napier, his first. Team foul number seven. Napier's feet were inside that little semi-circle half moon there. And that's an automatic blocking foul. Referees explaining that to Braxton Napier. Free throw on the way, a two-shot foul, and Bowling drains it. He's got six. Well, Mark, and I was just about to say, 
Wonder how much longer Jeff Britt's going to stay with Caden Edmondson because he's really struggling to catch his breath the last couple trips down the floor. And he, in fact, is going to get a rest here as Noah Chapman checks in for him. Second free throw up. Good. Great form and putting it right through there is Josh Bowling. He's got seven. Ten point lead. And you saw the stat there just a minute ago. Both teams struggling from the free throw line. Bethel at just 50%. John Brown at 43%. You're trying to cut into a lead. You got to be hitting those free throws. There goes Edmondson and dribbling downhill as players collide into the camera area. Looks like everybody's okay, but again, dribbling downhill, getting it to the rack is Isaac Edmondson. Count it. He's got 20. Bowling picks up the foul as second. Team foul number five. But right now, Isaac Edmondson is getting it done, being able to take it from the perimeter. That big first push side dribble there to get it to the rim and to the basket. Free throw up and good. That's the key. If you can dribble downhill and get it to the paint, good things are going to occur. And it's back down to the biggest lead of the game at 13. 52-39. Check that. Second biggest. It was 42-28 at one time. But the basketball is bowling. Interior pass to Harper. Kicks it to the three from the deep corner. Shot won't go by Grableyaskis. And grabbing the rebound is Napier. Pull up three in transition, leaves it short. Maybe in the shot. I don't know if Jeff Britt wanted that shot and that quick in the shot clock. Especially here, and just hit about the nine minute mark. 13 point lead. You want to run a little bit of clock. Trying to answer. Grableyaskis puts it up and in. Defense was late getting to him. Grableyaskis saw it before Sankara could get there. Knocks down the three ball. Timeout, 8.56 to go in the opening or second half, 52-42, Bethel by 10. Yeah, and Grabley Oscus there with the big three-pointer. Had an opportunity a couple of series down a couple of series ago. Missed an open look. But this John Brown team and Jason Beshta is gonna be continue. It's going to continue to have his uh, team shoot the three to try to get back in this game. Jake Caldo, though, still, still looking for uh, some opportunities here to get back in the game. As you see, uh, Grableyaskis there come off the screen and hit the three going into this last timeout. Good crowd on hand for the opening game. I think the Missouri schools, the Kansas City area, are on spring break. A lot of students are here to see this game, see the opening round. Napier's got it out front. Isaac Edmondson goes to work. Collision out front and then the steal. Edmondson just drove right into Carnes. Ball became loose and a turnover. And then stolen back by Edmondson and then fouled by Carnes. That'll be Carnes. Desnier, Denzier Carnes is third. Team foul number six. Check that, number seven. So we're shooting one and ones for the last 8.38 to play here. 52-42, Bethel by 10. Edmondson with 21 of his team's 52. Kyle will check back in on the tie after the, on the dead ball here, replacing Desmond Kennedy for John Brown. And Edmondson doing most of his damage, driving to the hoop or shooting the free throws. He hits the first one there. He had a three-pointer in the first half, but hasn't done much damage from the outside. He is attacking the rim today, and he has come up big for this Bethel team, which is, should be no surprise. He's 18 points per contest. You know, just third on the team, though, in May three-point basket. So that's not necessarily his game. What he's doing here today is what he's been doing all season long. I, yeah, I think you're right. I think his game is to drive. He can shoot the three, but his game is to get to the basket. Really good. First time we've seen him, of course, this year, but he does a great job of getting it to the rim. When, he do, when you do that, you get to the foul line, and he's 67% from the front free throw line. 12-point lead. Harper goes to work. Try a little shovel pass inside to Bailey. It's going to be stolen. Napier on the push. Ball fake. Pull up, jump shot. Up, good. Counter by Charles Cox. He's got seven, that equals his game average of seven per game. And it's 56-42, 14 point lead, matches the biggest of the game and the drive on the floor before the shot. 
And they'll get this foul whistle against Charles Cobb. Second, check that third on Cobb. Eighth team foul, a one-on-one -on -one opportunity now by Rokas Grablioskis. 75% free throw shooter, leads his team with 35 steals coming into the team. Free throw up, good. And John Brown right now going with Luke Harper in the backcourt with Jake Cottle. Har Harper, you remember, hit a couple three-pointers moments ago, and at, at this point in the contest, that man right there, Jason Beshta, looking for answers here. And if he's got a hot shooter, he needs that player to step up right now as time now becoming a factor. Fifty-six forty-three. Not to Chapman as it breaks some full court pressure. Inside 7.45 to play. Out front with it is Braxton Napier. Takes some time here. No hurry. 12 in the shot clock. Little weave out front. Looking for a good open shot. A good shot as Evanson posts up. Going to work out front with it. Cobb with three seconds on the shot clock. Puts it up and in. That's his area of the court, Mark. He's hit two big shots there here in the last couple of minutes. Cobb, first in transition with a nice pump fake, pull-up jumper that time with just three seconds on the shot clock, steps back to get some separation. And Bethel now with the commanding 15-point lead. Biggest lead of the game, Harper looks inside. Errant pass, Bailey tries to save it, but it's gonna be run down and stolen by Chase Napier. He'll push it up on the far side of the court. Goes to the basket and then Looked like he might have walked, but I think the foul occurred before the walk. So Napier will go to the line to shoot a one and one. They're going to get Harper on the foul, his third. Team foul number eight is Josh Bowling will check back in for Bailey in the John Brown lineup. So Napier to the free throw line. He's got two points, averages 12.5 a game, a 66% free throw shooter. Is the 5'10 guard. Napier, free throw up, off the back of the iron. Chapman does a nice job of vertically going up and just getting that offensive rebound. Drive to the basket, kick to the corner, pull up, jump shot, rattles around no good. Ball is tipped up, bounced around like a ping pong ball, but into the hands of Bowling. John Brown needs a little giddy up here if they're gonna come back and try to cut into this 15 point lead. They're running out of time with six and a half to play. Carnes to the basket. Blocking foul inside. That's going to go against Braxton Napier, his second. Team foul number nine. Carnes had a nice first half with eight points coming off the bench. He's yet to score here in the second half. And again, a team that struggled from the free throw line all afternoon will need to start hitting some free throws here. They're to cut into this lead. Free throw up with a one one up and good. By Carnes, he's got nine off the bench. Average is 6.9. Leads the team off the bench with 5.2 rebounds throughout the season. Perrier will check back in, replacing Grambliaskis for the Golden Eagles. From the Sooner Athletic Conference. Second opportunity by Carnes, and at least some time he leaves it short, and Isaac Ebenson rips down the rebound. Across the timeline is Braxton Napier. Kicks it over to his twin brother, Chase Napier. But they're one on one games growing up. I'd like to broadcast some of those. That might have been fun. Skip pass. Corner three. You might have seen a lot of that when they were growing up, playing in the neighborhood. As Chase Napier just knocks down a three, courtesy of his twin brother, Braxton Napier, on the assist, baby. 61-44, Bethel starting to pull ahead. 17 now. The dribble drive by Bowling, running one-hander up good. He thought he was fouled on that, nothing called. He's got nine. Golden Eagles need to get some defensive stops right now. We talked earlier, race to 60. Bethel got to 61. Does John Brown have his... A close in him here. Three off the mark, and they're going to get a foul inside. Push off foul. I think that's going to go against 
Carnes. That is, here. Yep. Carnes is fourth. Team foul number nine. And to the line, that was an off ball foul. And Isaac Edmondson with his 23 points will walk to the charity stripe to shoot a one and one. Caden Edmondson getting ready to check in. Looks like he's going to be for the shooter. Give Isaac a break here with 529 to play. Well, Bethel's done a nice job all afternoon on the offensive glass. And a lot of that was Caden Edmondson. Well, we also had some big plays from Noah Chapman to keep plays alive. Isaac Edmondson with 24, six above his game average coming into this game. This one off the mark, rebounded by Cottle. Jake Cottle hit an early three, added two free throws, and has been held to five points. In the hands of Bowling, takes it to that left baseline. Picked up there by Chapman. Ball fake, gets him in the air. No contact, rebounded by Perrier. He gets a strip from behind. 5-0-5 to play. No hurry here for the Wildcats, making just their second ever appearance in the NAIA National Championship. And want to play on, want to get a game Friday, pass to Chapman, got position, put it up and in. Noah Chapman on the feed gets his second bucket, and it's an 18-point lead. Bethel in the driver's seat now with 4.40 to play in the second half. Yeah, Mark, and this is a Bethel team now leading by 18 and shooting just 11 of 20 from the free throw line here today. So they're really starting to pull away as John Brown gets the basket there and takes a timeout. Josh Bowling's got 11 on that drive. First player into double figures for the Golden Eagles is he's got 11. Nine for Denzier Carnes. Six for Grabliowska, six for Kennedy, six for Harper, five for Bailey, and five for Cottle. And that's been, Cottle was the first team, all, all first team selection in the Sooner Athletic Conference, and he hasn't scored in a long time. No, he and hasn't. That, and that he's had really just a tough night shooting for an outstanding six foot one guard for John Brown. Yep. It's one of those games. He's one of nine from the field, Mark, and uh, that includes one of seven from three-point range. And, you know, they hit the three-point basket very early in the game. And if you're rooting for John Brown, you think that's a good sign. But that three-pointer ends up being the only field goal that he's made in this entire game. He's hit a couple of free throws up to this point, and that's a big reason why his, uh, his John Brown team finds themselves down by 16 points. Cottle is a senior. Cottle is a senior from Benville, Arkansas. Let's take a look at it in the last couple of baskets. Nice entry and great position to seal his man off was Chapman as he put it up and in. When you get that kind of seal and feeding the post, folks, is an art. Try it sometime. It's not easy, but that was a great feed, and Chapman got position, laid it up and in. Full court pressure here by the Golden Eagles. They need stops every time down. They can't give up very many more points. And, bo and both teams are in the double bonus now, but nine fouls. Next foul, team shoot two. Noah Harry here with Braxton Napier. Takes to the baseline, wrap around. They're gonna get an illegal screen. They're gonna get this on Chapman. That was a good call. Chapman tried to try to get a little bit better positioning for the drive by Braxton Napier. It's a non-shooting foul, but the tenth team foul on Bethel. 407 to play, 16-point margin as Grablioskis gets it across the mid-court stripe. Look like an emotion offense. Pull up three on the way. Bowling can't get it to go. Bailey gets the rebound, but a foul inside on the floor. Good offensive rebound by Quinton Bailey. You know, Bowling's another player, Mark, that John Brown has been counting on this year to score for them, and he's now just one of five shooting the three. So between he and Caudill combined two of 14 
from three point range this afternoon. Foul was on Caden Edmondson. A couple of free throws here by Bailey. Up and good. He's got six. Isaac Edmondson back in for Chapman. You're going to keep Isaac Edmondson on the bench very long here if you're head coach Jeff Brett. 19 years the head coach for the Wildcats. Second opportunity. Up and good. Bailey's got seven. 14 point lead, 355 to play, full court pressure. They'll double team it. It's kind of a one, two, two. Pass ahead. Layup up and good. Evanson is the getting behind the defense was Braxton Napier and gets the easy bucket on the pass by Edmondson. Going to work is bowling. Turnaround jump hook. It's the back of the iron and rebounded by Charles Cobb. Outlet in position and position with it is Chase Napier. Kicks it back out to Braxton Napier and Bethel's going to take some time here. Run some clock. 315 to play up by 16. Fifth seed trying to beat the fourth seed. Three won't go. Rebounded by Kennedy on the push. Nice transition defense for Bethel to get back and then knocking the ball out of the hands of Grablioskis was Chase Napier. Paddle to the basket, up and under, shot won't go. It's one of those tough, tough game here. Just a tough shooting game for Jake Cottle. And obviously Bethel not going to be in a hurry here to get a shot off, enjoying a 16-point lead. Caden Edmondson <laughs> again gets position. Best playing basketball, the ball fake. Edmondson, you can see he's done that a few hundred times in his career. Carnes picks up his fifth. He fouls out with nine points with 235 to play. And to the line to shoot a pair will be Caden Edmondson, who has not enjoyed his free throw experience here today. But he is his what he how he positions himself inside. And he's a big target at six foot eight. Right. Just one of four from the free throw line this uh, this morning. But he does have eight points and seven rebounds. Couple of them offensive. Free throw up and slightly short on that free throw. Drew a little bit of iron. Second opportunity here for Caden Edmondson. Stops the clock at 235 to play. Bethel up by 16, 66, 50. He's just a 63% free throw shooter on the season. He's been even worse than that today, even though he makes that one there. However, he has done several other things to help his Bethel team what looks like advance to round number two. Next game scheduled at 1045, Kansas City time. Number two, Lewis Clark State against number seven, Campbellsville. Stolen here, here comes Isaac Edmondson. Gives it away, alley oop, slam time. Charles Cobb. And Bethel is on their way, up by 19. Ball is stripped, loose on the deck. Nearly stolen. John, John Brown keeps the ball into the hands of Bowling. Drive to the basket off the glass, up and good. Bowling's got 13, immediate timeout for Jason Beshta. For a minute 58 to play, I think you can update your bracket that Bethel is going to advance. Bethel will play. We'll have that game for you Friday morning at 1045. Bethel will play the winner of LSU Alexandria, the number one seed in the Liston bracket, and Central Baptist Arkansas. The overall number one seed here is Georgetown, Kentucky. They got that as Benedictine of Atchison, Kansas, north here of Kansas City, was the number one seed, but got knocked off in the Heart of America Athletic Conference Finals. So they are a number one seed, but not the overall number one seed. I know you've got information on that. But Georgetown will play this afternoon at 445 against Rocky Mountain. 
Benedictine plays Thursday night at 730. So again to win this championship you win five games and six playing days. Tough duty. It is a tough duty. No question about it. Uh, you know, the good thing about it is when you get to that final night that championship night you've got two teams who are going to be in the same boat playing their fifth game in the six and then six nights. So no not really an advantage to anyone. You know I think right now at Bethel getting the win here this morning if they can uh, hold on for the final minute 58. Uh, you really like playing that early game I think. Now you get to kind of enjoy the rest of the afternoon. You probably sit and uh, watch uh, some of the other action here especially scout the next game that you're going to be uh, the, for the opponent you're going to be playing here and look at this off we the call inbound. That, my club team we call that grand slam and that's what they did. <laughs> they said they sat Napier long and Isaac Edmondson hit him, put it up and in. He's got six now, and it's a 19 point lead. Trying to answer from three, and Harper hits his third three of the game. He's got nine. 71 55. 90 seconds to play. Pass inside to Edmondson, up and good. What a feed there to Isaac Edmondson. He's got a game high 26 points and it's 73 55 Cottle long range three air ball picked up by Napier to Isaac Edmondson Bethel will advance with a minute five left and a foul outside that's going to go against Harper that's his fourth and to the line to shoot will be Isaac Edmondson. Well, this Bethel team has done a really nice job here in the last couple of minutes of handling what pressure John Brown's thrown at him, frantically trying to get back in the game. But uh, Bethel's found several wide open layups. Edmondson has been key to that. Also Cobb. Cobb's had himself a nice game. 13 points off the bench, eight of them coming here in the second half as Edmondson hits the first free throw. Which gives him now 26 for the game. And Edmondson looks a little exhausted there at the free throw line. Mark, can you blame him? <laughs> he's had, yeah, he's put a heck of a game in. He's got 27, and now John Brown is going to. Both teams are going to empty their benches now to get everybody to have the experience. Of, and it's hard work, folks, to get to this national championship. Both these games, the teams came in here. John Brown, 23 and 10, took second in their conference. Played 22 conference games. How about that? Right. Got to the championship of their conference. They'll end the season 23 and 11. Bethel 24 and 8. They'll go to 25 and 8, and wait two days and play their second game as Edmonton hits the free throw. He'll finish with 28. As Jacob Rose will check in. It's a nice pat on the back from his head coach Jeff Brett. Minute five to play, biggest lead of the game at 20, 75, 55. Well, it's a tournament that gives out 13 automatic bids. That means you've got 19 teams here that received at-large bids. Very competitive tournament. 45 seconds to play here. Big second half, 41 point second half here by Bethel. Expanded to 10 point halftime lead at 34 24 to leading by 20 now, 75 55. Eight on the shot clock. Spin move inside, layup up good. Uh, Terrell Brown there coming off the bench, taking advantage of the playing time. 16 seconds left. You know the substitutes that. Our scout teams and all that, they want to get some points here. Oh, I guarantee they're play, it. They're going to play it all out. Layup, the first layup up, good. Harper's into double figures with 11, and that should do it. Five seconds, four seconds. Bethel will hold on, and they will post a 77 to 57 win over John Brown, the Golden Eagles. And Bethel will advance to play Friday morning, scheduled tip-off time at 10.45 against the number one seed of the Liston bracket, either L number one seed LSU Alexandria or Central Baptist out of Arkansas, the number eight seed at games Wednesday this afternoon at three. Bethel's in the first game advances. 
take a real quick scoring recap here for John Brown as you look at the brackets there at the Liston bracket. LSU Alexandria and Central Baptist Vanguard will play William Penn at 630 today. Lewis Clark State, Campbellsville, Kentucky. That's our next game at 1045. But Bethel punches their ticket and they'll play Friday, March 22nd at 1045. Leading scores for John Brown. 13 for Josh Bolding, 11 for Luke Harper, 9 for Denzier Tarns, 4 Bethel. As they advance, they were led by Isaac Edmondson's 28, 11 for Charles Cobb off the bench, 9 for Caden Edmondson. Our next game, number two seed Lewis Clark State, Idaho against number seven seed Campbellsville, Kentucky. We'll have that for you coming up. You've been listening to the 82nd annual NAIA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship from Historic Municipal Auditorium. From our partner, Ross Cashel, this is Mark Miller. This is the NAIA Network. <laughs>